Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Abhas, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you Team 2870 Matrix from Mumbai, India. They are your 2024-2025 Into the Deep World Champions, absolutely fantastic matches every single time, and as far as sample cycles go, they are one of the best sample bots I've seen this season, just really clever mechanisms, simple hardware, very innovative sensor use, I can't wait to jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. All right, guys, so I want to just get right into it. Let's start with a cycle, uh, go through the intake, just do the full cycle, and then we'll break down each part uh, step by step. So that's our intake mechanism. It extends and with the button he can flip it and pick it up. Yeah, and now let's pick up the, let's do the transfer and just deposit it and then we'll break it down. Yeah, very cool. So the first thing I want to focus on is the bucket. A lot of teams have done claw to claw transfers, but you guys haven't. Why go with that bucket design? So I'm going to be honest with you. It started off as a training exercise. We were just making a simple bucket and we were adding that onto the CAD of the robot that we'd already made. However, once we found out that we'd actually made the bucket in real life, we found that it just worked and there was no need to overcomplicate the robot. Yeah, and as far as like additions and changes go throughout the season, did you always have the latch? Did you add it on later? What was that like? So we didn't always have the latch. We did, so bef like about two months before India regionals, we did not have the latch. And what we found out is during the um, transfer sequence, the samples kept falling inside the robot and then we could never pick up any more because yeah. then match over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And um, another thing, a question I have here, I see like a series of holes. Was this so you could just test like different uh, positions for the linkage and stuff like that? Or why have like this hole grid? Yeah, so uh, those number of holes are used so that we can test uh, where exactly the bucket should be placed. Mm -hmm. um, when once they were already made, it's fine. We figure out where to put them. Cool, yeah. And as far as automations go with this, I think I see a pair of brake beams or some sensor there. What is that being used for and what is it? So the beam breaker is mainly there to make sure that the robot knows that there's a sample inside. So if there's no sample inside and I press the button, nothing's gonna happen. And we face many errors with that, so that's why we ended up doing this. Okay, very cool. Now, you've brought the sample up, you, you've used your slides. Why go with that angled extension on the slides as compared to just the perfectly vertical system we've seen from a lot of other teams? So um, what I found that is while driving, if we had a vertical slide and the robot was way too close to the basket, then on its way down, it would collide with the basket and psh, everything would fall yeah. out. So with this scenario, um, we could be far enough away from the basket. Yeah, and another thing I know is you guys have some clever automations when it comes to bringing the slides back down. Do you want to show us how that works? If you can pick up a sample and then walk me through that. Sure. So Kanish over here is going to pick up a sample. Okay, now. Um, when he presses the down arrow, what you're going to notice is that the thing doesn't go down. That's because, what we, uh, as I said, it would collide earlier on. So now that uh, we have an automation inside the drive-based code, where only once the encoder counts increase by a certain amount, and it detects that, you know, we've actually driven far enough away from the basket, only then does it come down. Okay, yeah, and so if we just push the robot forward, the slides will come down, or does it also have to be like another driver button you push? No, but it also takes gamepad input. Okay, I yeah. see. Yeah, that, that's super cool. And is this something you added like just from day one, or it's something you realized like later in the season when you were trying to really push your cycles and optimize them? So we realized we played uh, with this during our India regionals. And many a times we faced an issue where the samples would fall out of the bucket. So while we were practicing for Worlds, uh, we decided to add this so that we could have enough time to adjust the samples on the basket and perfectly position them to add more samples later on. Okay, yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. And another thing I want to ask you guys about were, it, were your autonomous programs. You, you're not running just like a very basic four sample autonomous. I mean, that's not what you would expect from the world champions anyways, but it's not just 
purely cycling back and forth from the submersible zone. Uh, it seems like you changed your autonomous overnight. Is that true? What talk? Just tell me a little bit about that, and, we'll, and then we'll jump into the specifics. Okay, so if you watch our matches, yes, it is true. We did change our autonomous samples overnight, and that's because as soon as Apple Creek picked us, we knew stuff's got to change. Yeah, and so uh, how did those cycles specifically change? What changed in your autonomous? So earlier on, our autonomous was just go pick up, drop, pick up, drop, right? Now we also go from the backside behind Upper Creek Specimen Autonomous and we pick up the two uh, that samples that are meant for preload from the observation zone. Okay, very cool. And doing an autonomous change for the World Championship and the World Championship playoffs is pretty stressful, I have to say. How are you able to do that overnight and have it be so consistent match after match? I have two words for you. Meep, meep. Okay. Yeah, and so yeah, if you can walk me through a little bit what you guys have going on there and how you're using it. Okay, so this year we moved from the regular old Roadrunner versions to Roadrunner 1.0, which uses command-based logic, just like FRC. What I've noticed is in the previous years of uh, FTC, a lot of the code would fight for the same mechanism, which would lead to battery drainage. With command-based code, only one part of the code can use one thing at one time. Yeah, and as far as Meep Meep and visualizing your autonomous paths, how was that helpful in developing these new programs so quickly? Well, it's the age-old question, right? Who gets a robot, mechanical or programming? Well, over here, we can both have the bot at the same time. Programming in the Meep Meep visualizer and mechanical with the actual bot. Okay, yeah, and so was it sort of a situation where you were doing driver practice with Upper Creek while you were also programming these new autonomous paths or how did that work? Were you just testing old ones while programming new ones? Tell me a little bit so about that. So we just that. went to the hotel last night, right? And they were like, hey, we have the strategy for you, why don't you do it? And you're like, sure, we did it. And yeah, so we were doing drive practice with them. We also did a lot of auto testing with them. It was a greatly productive session. Yeah, awesome. And, uh, you know, another thing I want to talk about is your guys' driver practice in general. You know, very stressful and intense matches. How do you practice to make sure that you'll perform very well during these matches? Well, the, it's the age old mantra practice, 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 right? In addition to that, we hosted a lot of scrimmages in India with other local teams so that, you know, we actually get a sense of competition and teamwork, gracious professionalism, all that. Yeah, that, that's really great. Well, Team Matrix, thank you guys so much you guys have had just really fantastic matches this entire season super super high scoring and i can't wait to see what you come uh, into decode with so reporting for fun robotics network i'm ab Haas, and this is team 2870 matrix you're into the deep world champions thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, future-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.